it helps to have a hot coffee when you're getting in. That's what I got in my hand right now. Hold on, let me drop this camera down a little bit. There it is. There it is. Oh man. Feeling pretty good, but yes, we're going to talk about recovery today and today's run in the Turbo 2. So I've been so busy getting ready for Pikes Peak. I didn't even give you guys my first impressions on the Turbo 2s from Nike. So I think I'm probably going to skip my first impression video. I apologize. It just got so busy uh, doing trail running, mountain running the past three weeks uh, because we're almost at 50 miles in these shoes. So I will get you my full review probably in the next three or four days because we're approaching 50 miles rapidly. Okay, I'm off to, yes, buy some ice. Step number one for recovery for me. So I'm off to go get, I think they sell 10 pound bags at Costco. Let's rock and roll. All right. Two 10 pound bags of ice, that'll do the trick. That'll do the trick. All right, all right, here goes nothing. This is gonna be chilly. Uh, the reason you don't see ice baths very often on the vlog is because of really time. Our ice machine at our house in our freezer doesn't work and frankly, it would take a lot of ice to make a tub really cold enough to make it effective. Uh, so, and I can't use the excuse of money anymore. Like these two 10 pound bags were $4 from Costco. Like that's pretty reasonable. And uh, in an ideal world, I would have done this right after the Pikes Peak Ascent. Like if I had a hotel that was, you know, five blocks or, or less from the, the finish line, basically walk to the hotel, jump in the ice bath immediately before the award ceremony. Uh, but, you know, you've got to work with what you have sometimes. And if you're in high school and your football team has access to a cold tub, and so at CU, that's where I started doing ice baths a lot, especially after hard workouts. And I must say, I think it did help uh, with recovery in preparation for 12 hours later, pretty much doubling the next day. So we would do ice baths on Tuesdays and Fridays after hard workouts when I was at CU. Um, but again, I realize it's not for everyone. And again, it really does come down to time and access, access to, uh, to ice. But if your football team has access, cross country runners, track runners, you should have access too. So talk to your athletic director and say, Hey, our football players, like they've got, they've got ice tubs. Why can't we have access to ice tubs as well? <laughs> oh, baby. It helps to have a hot coffee when you're getting in. That's what I got in my hand right now. Hold on, let me drop this camera. Gotta go for it. Oh, don't think about it. Do not think about it, YouTube family. <laughs> you will get more used to the ice baths, I must say. I'm not quite as adapted to them right now. I, all right, so I did okay. I didn't make it to 10 minutes. Again, I'm just not used to ice baths right now. I will get better. I will get better. Oh, it hurts so bad. All right, next up, Epsom salt baths right afterward where I put in warm water, hot water. Training block, but especially after a big race, this is my go-to uh, little recovery treat. And so question of the day, actually, niching down here, what is your post-peak race 
treat, whether it's food or drink or something that you really like to enjoy right after a big race that you've been training for, for weeks and months. Get it, get it going down in the comments. I can't wait to read because this is my go-to dark chocolate with almonds from Trader Joe's. Absolutely love it. All right, there we go. Cheers, YouTube family. Cheers to uh, electrolytes, huh? Don't mind if I do. And yes, all right, next step in the recovery process, post peak race, compression sleeves. Now, I wear these more so in the winter time, you know, cause it's cold out. Uh, and it's, I don't wear them too much during actual workouts or long runs. Some people do, but I don't. Uh, I think they're a little too constricting for me uh, or restricting for me for my, my gait cycle and just uh, they feel a little too tight around my calves. But this company is Zensa, Z-E-N-S-A-H. These are not the highest end. Like I'm very interested in trying compressed sport. That's probably my next compression sleeve purchase that I'll make. But again, these just help draw that blood down to your lower legs, helps with recovery. So let's put these on now. Um, yeah, Zenza, I love them. All right, here we go. Now, not to be weird, YouTube, but I, I told my massage therapist today that uh, I've never really seen my veins stick out of my legs so much, uh, which means, I don't know what it means other than I, after Pike's Peak. I, I think it means I race really hard. Uh, so anyway, my veins in my calf are really doing some strange things and i actually posted about this on instagram uh they're just like sticking out more than usual so hopefully these sleeves are going to help with recovery moving forward here we go put this on um and yeah so anyway i don't know if you guys experience that after a hard race or a hard workout but my uh my veins are are sticking out a little bit all right ready to rock and roll now ready to rock and roll here they are boom We'll take it. So, and then, of course, next step, my recovery slides from Hoka. Love these. Uh, they are, you know, they're a little pricey. I think you can find them around $50 now, which for a sandal is a lot. But I've had these for a year and over a year now. And they, I think I could get at least another six months out of them. They just keep going and I wear them all the time, basically every single day. Uh, good support. And I prefer the Hoka slides over Ufus. I know a lot of people love Ufus, O-O-F-O-S. I found Ufus to be a little too soft and cushiony, almost too comfortable. I needed a little more support. And so I'm going with these, I love these Hoka slides. Uh, boom, bada bang, and yes, they're down below. Now, everyone, I already, you know, I had my massage today and somebody asked the, uh, last week, how long is my massage? It's about 30 minutes and then some stretching afterward, which is amazing. Uh, so I'm not going to use the, because I already got a massage, I'm not going to use the foam rollers today, neither the trigger point nor the normal one, uh, just to, because it is a workout. It is like working your muscles when you go get a massage. And uh, my massage therapist said today uh, that you don't, like you want to give, if you run a hard race, um, you want to give it a couple days before you go get a massage, because if you're doing a massage that's really digging in, like, and really work in those trigger points and those what I would call a knot uh, in your leg. It can be a pretty, it can be a hard workout on your legs. Like your muscles should be barking at you. So um, anyway, but I am gonna stretch and use the foot log right now as part of my recovery after Pike's Peak. Oh, that feels so good. And one of my goals leading into Amsterdam, into the marathon, is to uh, I, I let I let up a little bit on my flexibility uh, push. After Cleveland, I was just kind of so disheartened by the injury that I let up a little bit on my flexibility and stretching. And so one of my goals leading into Amsterdam is to really work on my range of motion through my gait cycle. And part of that process is gonna be flexibility, stretching, foam rolling, of course, uh, form drills, all of that. So anyway, whoo, oh, pain cave, pain cave. All right, everyone, here we go into the studio with my recovery tools. And yes, that clip you just watched of me stretching out on the back patio, I filmed it almost three hours ago. Basically, I had to pop up real quick, pause the stretching. The family arrived home. We ate dinner. We did bedtime. And now I'm back. So some days 
it gets busy. And I feel like today's filming was a little jumbled, so thank you for your patience if the story is not as clear as other days, like tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be a great day. Make sure you come back for that. But nonetheless, we are gonna get it done talking about recovery steps that I take after a peak race. And the reason I'm excited about this topic right now, I haven't raced a big peak race in almost one year because of the injury and frankly because I just haven't honed in on really big peak races. Uh, the last one was the Run Rabbit Run 100. Hopefully I remember to link to it upper right hand corner. Uh, so I'm excited to dive into just a few more tips along the way and reminders for what I like to do after a hard effort. Okay, number one, active rest. So thankfully my legs are not experiencing uh, DOMS, D-O-M-S, that uh, is an acronym for Delayed Onset Muscle Soreness, which usually happens after a hard workout or hard race two days later. I'm not experiencing that after Pikes Peak, and my thesis as to why is because the race was uphill. Now it was it was fast, well, 10 minute pace for me, but it wasn't, there was no downhill, it wasn't on pavement, so that's why my legs are actually feeling really good right now. So I am a big believer though in active rest, meaning the day after a hard race, you don't you don't just sit around. You're walking around your house, you're walking around the block, you walk to the post office to check the mail. You're actively getting your legs moving to help keep them from tightening up. Is the, At the end of the day, that's the goal. You don't want your legs to tighten up after hard effort. So that's what I mean by active rest. And okay, we already talked about number two, compression sleeves. That's what I have on my calves right now. I'm loving it. I've had them on for about three hours now. I'll take them off when I go back inside. And we'll see how my legs are responding to the compression in the morning. Okay, number three, we already talked about Epsom salt baths slash ice baths. Again, fight for your ice baths if you're in, in high school and you and your high and your coach. Okay, listen to your coach first, but make sure like if there if you have access to a to an ice tub that uh, with your coach's approval that you are fighting to get in there because I am a believer in them. I just frankly need to prioritize the time to make it happen. Okay, number th four, uh, massage and or foam rolling. We've talked a lot about that recently. Um, man, and make sure you find a, a massage therapist who has experience with other athletes, specifically runners, okay? That is a key point, not just a, you know, a massage therapist who may be um, I don't know. There's all sorts of different areas that you can be a massage or a masseuse in. So massage therapist who deals with runners specifically. All right, moving on to number five, extra sleep. I like to shoot for at least eight hours, preferably eight to 10 hours after a peak race. And frankly, last night, True Love and I, we went on date night and my eyes were like, I don't, I almost thought for a minute that I was getting hit with allergies because I couldn't stop rubbing my eyes. But I think what it was, I think I was just tired. So I'm recovering from the race. So at least eight hours, and I know we're all busy, but it's like prioritize, making, you know, sacrificing Netflix, sacrificing uh, reading a book late, or sacrificing maybe talking on the phone, or whatever the case may be, sacrificing, I don't know. There's millions of answers to that question as far as why we might prioritize something over sleep. It's, you know, we gotta be sleeping a lot in order to recover and also, Okay, we won't get into the science, but the adaptation to hard workouts happens while you're sleeping. So the more you sleep, the more adaptation you are having, the more basically benefit you're getting from your hard workouts and from your racing. Okay, number five, and I didn't get to do this today, but I did it yesterday, aqua jogging in the pool. I, I can't even, I, I've only really started taking aqua jogging seriously in the last five months like where I'm in there two to three times a week and I only go for um, I only go for like 10 to 20 minutes it's not that much time but the weightlessness and I wear a belt to help with floating and I just kick my legs and I'm telling you that motion that weightless motion is so it just it's helping me I think it's helping me so that is number ooh, one two three four five six uh, number seven of course continuing to eat healthy and I will get you know my I need to I must say I've taken a little break from salads. I'll pick it up uh, maybe tomorrow, hopefully, but I will give a shout out to turmeric, a natural anti-inflammatory. Of course, talk to your doctor first, but I take turmeric supplements 
to help with uh, basically reducing inflammation after hard efforts. I also have turmeric tea you can make. So I don't do that quite as much during the hot summer months, but I also drink a turmeric tea. And that is it for now. I could keep going, but I think I'm going to call it there. Again, I already asked the question of the day about what is one of your favorite post peak race of foods or drinks that you like to have, uh, maybe to help you recover or maybe to just enjoy like my dark chocolate. You know how I like that. So thank you again for bearing with the filming or lack thereof today. Uh, and yes, I am going to give shout outs to two other vlogs. Uh, they both have to deal with recovery where I dive even deeper into this topic about recovery. It's a little repetitive to today's vlog, but if you want to check either of those out on the right or left, that'd be amazing. All right. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Seek beauty. Work hard and love each other. Big day tomorrow. Big day. See you tomorrow.